when I see Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We just said good morning to everyone that's on Facebook Live this morning. Just We thank God for being here with you today. Realize it truly could have been the other way. We thank God because he's still good to us in spite of everything that we're going through at this time. Uh, we're just happy to see uh, as many as you can tune in and for us to talk about Christ for a little while. Uh, it's all about Christ and not about us. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, David when he got ready to fight Goliath. He talks to Goliath and tells him that how he's coming to him, but he's coming uh, in the name of the Lord. And that's all we have, uh, people, is the name of the Lord. Every knee shall bow, every, one, every tongue shall confess at the name of Jesus Christ. So we praise in him and we bless in him. And we want to continue to lift him up and have him in front of everything that we do. Uh, Paul Morton sings a song. Bishop Paul Morton sings a song. Say, don't do it without me. We don't want God to do anything without us. So we thank God for being here this morning. He's truly good to us. He's an awful, awesome and wonderful God. Amen. Uh, this is... Uh, May the 24th, 2020. Uh, this is our Memorial Day weekend tradition. Uh, most of us uh, are traveling or with family and friends during this weekend. But however, some of us uh, will still stay at home and we're not uh, out and about as some of the others are. Uh, we hope that everyone else is uh, paying attention to what's going on around us. Uh, we'll listen to what God tells us and not what man is telling us. Realizing that uh, some men are saying to get back out. Some are saying stay at home. But right now I'm going to listen to God and I'm going to believe the experts to say that maybe we need to shelter in place for a little while longer. Uh, our governor of our state of Mississippi uh, uh, stated that we could go back to church this week. Well, he said, do the social distancing that we asked to, was asked to do. But he said at the end of all of that, he said, but as for him and his family, they're going to stay at home. So that gave me the clue that for as for me and my family and my church family, maybe we should stay at home a little while longer also. So we, when it's time for us to get back together, we will uh, get back together again. Greetings, greetings, greetings. God is a awesome God. Amen. A little of this and we'll be right back. Amen. I'm trying to get another uh, uplink started. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
Again, we're Morgan Grove Missionary Baptist Church, uh, 4703 Malone Road South. Uh, my name is uh, Dwight Carter, our service pastor there. We say good morning to all of the church members, all of the ones that are looking in on the World Wide Web. Uh, just good to be here this morning. Uh, two things is that uh, one is that we have a, a conference call dialing number. I put that out there to most of the members. Uh, each Wednesday night, we're going to uh, be getting together on a conference call. We'll do some uh, updates as to where we are with the church and our uh, uh, outlook as to when we're going back and any issues that we have, we'll talk about that. And then we'll do uh, a word, a few words of prayer. And this week, uh, our very own Deacon Miller is going to start summarizing our uh, uh, Sunday school on Wednesday nights. And so we look forward to that at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights uh, via conference call. Uh, members, you have the numbers. Uh, feel free to share it if you need to, if you like to. And, but uh, share it, especially with all of our members on uh, Wednesday night time 7 o'clock. The next thing is that I will, uh, all of my uh, sermons or the sermons that I preached, also all of the old uh uh, things that I uploaded from when people was uh, singing in the past, they're uh, at Dwight Carter on uh, man YouTube, amen. Dwight Carter on YouTube. So I ask that you go there and check some of those out. Also, if you would, would you su subscribe as you are over there, amen. Dwight Carter on YouTube, amen. The next thing is, uh, we just, again want to give all praises and honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, honor to all honors due uh, uh, to my wife, Sister Carter, and all of the First Ladies, Sister Taylor, uh, Sister Rogers, mother, the mothers of the church, the deacons and the officials. Just good to be here this morning. We won't belong to time, but uh, in church services, uh, uh, we like to get together and be able to have a good time. Uh, the preaching is normally the end or the highlight of each service. But during the service, uh, the reason I've been playing music, we as Christians, we do joy and enjoy the fellowship of being able to sing praises unto the Lord. That's one of the reasons I uh, incorporate music into these Facebook Live uh, messages. Uh, COVID-19, a few facts. Uh, most of us know them is that uh, we're approaching 100,000 people dead in the United States. Uh, this week, uh, most of the country opened back up. Uh, the casinos and different places, everybody opened back up. So it's my contention and lots of the other ministers that I've talked to is that we will see a, a great outlook as to how everything is after these next two weeks we'll be able to tell uh, whether it's getting bad or worse because almost everywhere we went on yesterday, people are gathering outside my home and uh, a couple of spots on the street, people are gathering. So we want to see how it's going to last. And as soon as these uh, things transpire over the next couple of weeks, we have a real good picture as to where we are and be able to go back into church. I believe it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, God knows our hearts. In this term, in this time, God knows our hearts. Amen. It's time to go into our worship service. Uh, again, we won't uh, keep you long. It's uh, 15 minutes after hour already. I'm going to read a scripture and then 
we'll go into prayer and we'll uh, have another song after that. Amen. Our scripture reading is uh, come from Psalm 37. Psalms 37. Fret not thyself because of evil, evildoers, neither be envious against the workers of iniquity, for they soon shall be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so no, so thou dwell in the land and vary thou shalt feed. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. This is the part I want to get to. Though he fail, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him in his hand. I have seen the young, I have been young, and now I'm old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. The last two is the 23rd, 24th chapter of uh, verses of that same chapter. No matter what's going on, we got to believe that God has us in his hand. Uh, God is never going to forsake his people. When it seems like everything that is against you, God still has control. Amen. We want to pray this morning for our sick, our shed in, our entire church family, all of the churches that's open in Christ's name. Uh, we want to pray for the one that's in the convalescent care, uh, one that's in prisons, the one that's not able to do for themselves, Father. We just want to pray and that ask God will come in and deliver us from all evil. Then we want to pray for this country. We want to pray for our president, the entire leadership team, that we'll be able to, they will be able to do the right things about this country and, and lead us in the right direction. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we again come before you to say thank you. We acknowledge you as the maker and creator of this universe. We acknowledge you as the one that has all power. We acknowledge you as the supreme being, Father. Without you, there are none other, Father. We look to you, Father, for everything, Father. Realize, that, Father, that, that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. Father, we realize everything belongs to you. Father, we are here by your grace and your mercy, Father. You're here because we weren't taken out. In the past, there was, our, there was mercy towards us. And then we think about the grace that you give us each and every day. Because, Father, we don't deserve the things that we do, Father, that we get. Father, we ask that you look in on this on this nation, Father. Bless everyone that was in it, Father. Deliver us from this coronavirus. Let us be uh, mindful, Father, that you are still in charge. Father, all of the time that you brought your children out, Father, we realize you're going to bring us out. Father, now look in the sick home, the convalescent care. Father, church everyone that's not able to do for themselves, Father. Then church the caregivers, Father, that they will have a, a mind of a love and peace and treat the, the one that's in their care correctly, Father. Now, Father, bless every church that's open in your name. Bless every pastor. Father, we ask you to do all this in your daughter, son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm still praying not only for our church and our church families, but we're praying for all the other churches. Uh, we're separated uh, out of the church. But as I like to say each and every Sunday, the church is a building, amen, but we are the church. The doors are closed, but we are the church. Uh, we not be able, we may not be able to congregate, but we can congregate online. We can get our own little uh, uh, service right there in our home. We, in fact, we should have a place in our home or be able to set aside some time in our home to praise and worship God at all times. So that with that being said, uh, we want to talk just for a minute about uh, the Morgan Grove uh, Cash App. It's Morgan Grove, amen, with well, a dollar sign, Morgan Grove, and that's our Cash App, amen. And if you uh, would like to uh, contribute and members, please continue to contribute. Uh, members and outside the church have been doing an outstanding job helping Morgan Grove with uh, everything that we need to have done, even though the doors are closed. Amen. Then don't forget your church, your church homes. 
uh, surely uh, Marvin Grove will take your uh, tithes and offering, but I would insist that you, if you got tithes and offering, send it to your church or the one that you're affiliated to to help them do the things that they need to do. Uh, we're still trying to feed the sick. We're still trying to help out with the other things that are going on in the community, uh, feed the hunger apartment, and just trying to help out the ones in the community. So funds are still being shelled out to uh, different places. Just keep uh, doing what you're doing. Help all churches. Uh, this is not a selfish act for Morgan Grove, but look to your church and make sure you help them. We also have a P.O. Box, P.O. Box 192, amen, P.O. Box 192, Hernando, Mississippi, 38632, amen. So that's our business portion of it. Uh, uh, make sure you send your tithe and offering into your prospective churches. And with that, if you can reach out and help somebody at this time, whatever it may be, help your neighbor, help your friends uh, along the way amen one more song and we'll uh get right back into our our services amen Ready? You see, I'm already. 
We just want to say that it was God's amazing grace that has kept us here and it's going to keep us here. Uh, God has been good to us. We're in a different time, a time that none of us had seen before or expected to be in. But through these uh, times and toils and snares that we are going through, God is still keeping us alive. Amen. Uh, he's got joy in our heart and our spirit, and we're going to keep on keeping on no matter what uh, transpires. Our message this morning is that we are coming from this morning. Amen. It's coming from the book of Joshua. Amen. And if you would, turn with me to the fourth chapter, the book of Joshua. Bush, book of Joshua, fourth chapter. Book of Joshua. <coughs> Amen. The fourth chapter. Beginning at the first verse. And it came to pass while all the people were clean passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take ye twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man. Now command them saying take ye hence out of the midst of Jordan out of the place where the priest's feet stood twelve stones and you should carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lie this night then Joshua called the twelve men who he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe Amen. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord, your God, in the midst of the Jordan, and take ye up every man a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of the children of Israel, that this night that this might be a sign among you, that when your children Asked their father in time to come, saying, What means these songs? May God have a blessing to read and hear us and do us of his work. I don't want to just uh, take time to just talk to us for a few minutes that God didn't bring us this far to leave us. Amen. God didn't bring us this far to leave us. This passage of scripture is uh, following. The children of Israel, as they prepare to cross the Jordan River, amen, over into the promised land. Joshua is now the leader, and Moses is, uh, has been buried, amen. They had had a 30 days of mourning, and Joshua is now the leader. Uh, God had even told Joshua in a previous passage that, as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. Brother Preacher, why do you preach this sermon about going across the Jordan River this morning? I preach this sermon or, or attempt to preach this sermon is because they were at a place in their lives that had never been before. We are Christians. We as the whole world, we're in a place in our lives that we have never been before. And there has to be some apprehension back then, even with the leader. Joshua, as it is with you and I, about what's ahead of us. Amen. But Joshua, through the, the infinite wisdom of uh, God, uh, tells the children of Israel, amen, to pick out one man amongst all of the tribes to take a stone across in the place in which they should lodge. They pick up the stone and and they take it across, but it's not just taking the cross, just to take it across. Joshua, through the wisdom of God, is telling them to uh, 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 assemble these stones so that the children, amen, in days to come, could look back and say, 
what does these stones mean? mean? And somebody, most of the elders, should be able to tell them what these stones mean. Why do I uh, talk about stones in today's time? Because once we get through and cross over this COVID virus, amen, we too ought to have a testimony to tell our children what we went through and how God brought us out. The stones that simply symbolize that God brought them from one side to the other. But we ought to have a testimony. Our testimony ought to be what and God, Jesus Christ, is what's going to overcome the evil one. Amen. So we ought to have a testimony about what God has done for us during this time of this COVID virus. I'm not telling you to sit up altar in your house. I'm not telling you to put a rock in your house. I'm just telling you, you ought to be able to tell somebody in the future, especially your children and grandchildren, about what you went through during this time. Amen. You don't need to be able to tell them the numbers or how many was sick or, or, or like that. They, they will know them because they'll be written down somewhere in the annals of time. But you need to be able to tell them how God brought you out. See, one of the things that God noticed was before the children of Israel went into the promised land, most of us know that they had been walking in the wilderness for 40 years. Amen. And all of the one uh, uh, above, 19 and above, amen, was killed except uh, Joshua, amen, and Caleb. All of them died out in the wilderness, but all of the young people, some of them remember, but some of them didn't, amen. And God was telling them, don't go into this uh, promised land and not remember what I've done for you. And that's why all I want to stop by today to tell you, let's not forget what God is doing for us right now. We're still eating, amen. We're still sleeping. We're still having a, a great life, even in the midst of this COVID virus. How you say that, preacher? Amen. Amen. Because I can look around and see people doing good, amen, in the midst of the COVID virus. Amen. Some of us got those uh, stimulus checks. Amen. I'm working every day, but I still got a stimulus check. God blessed us in the midst, amen, of this virus. So we got to look back and uh, uh, well, look forward. And when we talk about what happened behind us, we got to tell our children how good God was to us during this time frame. Preacher, you don't know how bad I had. Yes, some of us don't have a hard time, but God is going to bring you out. We've got to be steadfast and unmovable as we go through what we're going through. God is telling us that we can't continue. Amen not giving him the praise for what he's done. I mentioned a while back that this virus only killing, you know, uh, three, maybe 4% of the population that get infected. It could have been the other way around. It could have been only three to 4% that was living, amen, out of this virus. But God is keeping us alive. God is keeping us alive for us to be able to tell the story about what he has done. The children of Israel, amen. Can't you see some of the the young people that's now old, amen, that maybe was 10 or 12, amen, when, when the Red Sea was parted. Now that here it is, they see it again, say, God is doing a miraculous thing again for us, amen. And so we as Christians, we got to be willing to tell others that God has done a miraculous thing. Let's don't get two weeks down the road, a month down the road, a year down the road, two years down the road, and, and, and don't forget what God did for us during this COVID virus, amen. Some of us didn't get sick. Some of us didn't lose our job. Some of us had financial gains during this time. We got to tell the goodness of what God did also. The bad is going to be told. It's going to tell how many got sick. It's going to tell how many died. It's going to tell how many hospitals were full. It's going to tell all of the bad things. But in the midst of this, we got to be willing to tell the goodness of the Lord. And that's all God wanted the children of Israel to do was to sit up these stones and be able to tell their children as they go forward how good he was. Amen. He wanted them to be able to tell not only them crossing, amen, the Jordan River, but he wanted to be able to tell them how he fed them when he came out, uh, uh, when they came out of Egypt. Amen. How he fed them with manna, how he fed them with quail, when they got thirsty, how he provided water for them in, in the wilderness, how he let them wear the same clothes for 40 years. Their clothes never wore out. Amen. Their sandals never tore up. 
their ankles never swell. He wanted to be able to tell people in the future, amen, how good God is. And that's what we got to do. We're going through right now. We cannot celebrate God. We believe that God inhabits our praises. We got to praise him in the morning. We got to praise him in the noonday. We got to praise him in the midnight hour. We got to praise him no matter what we go on through. We got to praise him when we're up. We got to praise him when we're down. We got to always praise God. God said we got, we got to praise him no matter what's going on in our life. Too many times we don't give God the praise that he was the one that brought us out. I look back over my life and I think of all the things that God has done for me. And I know that God has been good. But sometimes I forget to tell people about what God done for me. And that's all God is saying right now to the children of Israel. Don't forget what I done for you. Don't forget to tell the children that it was a God that sits high and looks low. It was a God that provides all of your needs, all your cares, and all of your wants. It was a God that allowed you to cross this Jordan River. And not only that, it may be somebody in the congregation that be able to tell what God did for them in the past. When they crossed the Red Sea, he wants his glory. He wants his honor. And we got to be willing to give it to him. But we got to be willing to give it to him on uh, the way God wants to, us to give it. From a pure and, and clean heart. Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. We got to praise him right now. We got to praise our way through because we are going through right now. I miss my loved ones. I miss the church members. I miss being able to get out, but I'm still praising God. And that's all God is saying. Praise him no matter what is going on. Praise him for what he has done for you. Let the children know what he has done for you. Our testimony ought to be something that's able to pass down from year after year after year. We ought to be able to tell them that how God kept us when everybody else was around us were dying. Our enemy may utterly fall. That's what the word said. But we didn't die. God kept us alive. And so we got to be willing to tell people in the future. So that's my message to us this morning. Is God didn't bring us this far to leave us. God is going to take us across this sea of COVID. God is going to take us across this river of COVID. God is going to protect us from the locals. God is going to protect us from the death angel. God is keeping us alive right now. So that is our message this morning. We got to understand that once God bring us out, because he's going to bring us out, once he bring us out, let's tell the world what God does for us. Amen. We have testimony at church sometime as I'm getting ready to close. It's very few people get up and have a testimony about what God has done for them. But after this, amen, we all ought to have a testimony. We all ought to be able to tell somebody what God did for us. We ought to be able to tell somebody how you was around somebody that died from COVID, but you didn't get it. You ought to be able to tell somebody how you got it, but you got over it. You ought to be able to tell somebody how good God was to you during COVID. It's time for us to Look back and see what God has already done for us. God brought us out. Amen. Amen. Of slavery. God brought us out of the civil rights. Amen. Uh, Jim Crow. God brought us out of poverty off the farm. God brought us out of all these things. But sometimes we forget to tell our children about it. Our children think we've had it like this all along. We got to look back and tell our children where God brought us from. After COVID, we got to be willing to tell everyone that God was the one that is keeping us alive. God sent his daughter and son, Jesus, amen, that he would die upon the cross for us. Amen. He died on the cross and he died that we might have the right to the tree of life. He died so you and I uh, might be free. He died so we might be able to worship and praise him as he would have us to worship and praise him. He died so we might be able to go to heaven and be with God one day. He died, amen, that we all might have the right to the tree of life. I'm so glad that my God is my everything. He's my all in all. He's my alpha and he's my omega. He's my beginning and he's my end. But God is saying through the words to the children of Israel this morning, you just can't have it in your heart. You got to be able to show some signs. Show up with the rocks, amen. Show up with your testimony. Show up with your praise and worship. God is saying, show people what? I have done for you. And so this morning, the children of Israel, they erected, amen, 
amen, the stones that was able to go back and tell their children everything that God has done for them. Our Jesus died for us on a hill called Calvary, amen. He stayed in an old dusty grave for three long days. Well, on the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hand. We must be willing to tell others about what God has done for us. As I truly close, I, I uh, somebody's out there that think that they are not worthy to be part of God's kingdom. See this old dressed up guy you see in front of you right now? I'm no good. The Bible says I'm no more in dirty rags. Amen. Amen. Another scripture said we all are sin and come short of the earth, of the glory of God. Sin and come short of the glory of God. We all are sinners saved by grace. So whatever you're going through, that abortion you had, ask God to forgive you and move on. That person you killed, ask God to forgive you and move on. Whatever you've done, amen. If you're living in sin, ask God to remove you from all unrighteousness. Whatever you've done, whatever you're in, ask God to forgive you, amen. And he is faithful and just to forgive you. Don't let nobody tell you that you're not good enough. Then when you look in the mirror, don't say that I'm not worthy of God, honor, and glory. God wants you just like you are. You can't wipe yourself off. You can't clean yourself up. Amen. I had desire to do better, but it was only God that was able to change me and make me into who I am today. Do I think I made it? <laughs> no, I don't. Do I think I, I, I'm closer than I ever been? Yes, I'm closer than I ever been, but I still got some things that need to be chipped away. Amen. That need to be washed off me before I get close to God. God's coming back for a church. Amen. With a spot or a blemish. Amen. And he's coming back with Jesus that's going to be able to cover all of our sins. Amen. So this morning, be able to try to be able to accept God for who he is and don't worry about what other people have to say. In closing, I've been uh, using these ABCs for the past uh, few weeks that we've been online. Uh, ABC of salvation. A, admit, amen, you are a sinner and you made mistakes, amen. B, believe Jesus is God's son and died on the cross and rose, amen, from the grave on the third day. Confess Jesus is your Lord in your life and commit your ways unto following Jesus. So I've been uh, preaching that, teaching that. I'm, it's a lot of things that we could go into a revelation, different things, try to scare you or, or tell you uh, how bad it's going to be if you don't accept Christ. Yes, it could be very bad. But God wants you to love him. God don't want to have you feared into, amen, uh, believing in him. Love him with all your heart, mind, and soul. God is a good God, and he's worthy uh, to be praised. Amen. That's our message for this morning. Don't let this time not be a time that you can't look back and tell your children everything that God uh, did for you during this time frame. Amen. 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 I'm trying to get back to my uh, word, my uh, music for a minute. Yes, a minute. Again, our YouTube, uh, excuse me, our uh, cash app is dollar sign Morgan Grow, amen. And you can uh, uh, send uh, your uh, tithes and offers via cash app, or you can send it uh, via the post office box. Uh, we're trying to stay away from it, uh, the mailbox because we really don't, uh, we're not there all the time. We don't. We want something to happen to your check uh, in the mailbox. Amen. We're going to play a little bit of this song. This is from uh, uh, Second Eudora uh, about six years ago. Sister Polky uh, leading this song. Amen. This is Second Eudora Mass Choir. Actually, it's July 19th. 2011.
I would ask that everyone that can subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's uh, several videos I did from years and years ago. Uh, Mother Rawls, Minister McGowan is on that preaching. Minister Toure is on that preaching. Uh, Minister Bell is on that preaching. Pastors on that preaching. There's a lot of different ones out there that's preaching on the YouTube channel. And I'm begging for subscriptions because once I get to a thousand, I can go live on YouTube. Amen. Enjoy the song. I'm gonna quit talking over. I said, Pokey, this is Sister Mary Jones. Amen. But when she's singing like that, her name is Pokey. Amen. Get out of here, but uh, uh, one last word. We uh, we talked last week from the first book of Thessalonians, and I just want to go back there just for a second to remind us that First Thessalonians five said, "Rejoice evermore." We got to rejoice no matter what's going on around us. Uh, if we're going through, we got a situation in life. Can I say we had situations and problems before COVID? And God brought us out. So rejoice in whatever you're going through. Uh, know that God is going to bring you out. You don't rejoice that you got counsel, amen, but you rejoice because you got the Lord on your side. And that God has the outcome already worked out, amen. You may be going through, but rejoice anyhow. And I, I, that was one of the verses, that was the 16th verse of the 5th chapter of Thessalonians. The 17th verse says, Pray without ceasing. We don't have to uh, have all those long dissertations when we get ready to pray. Amen. We don't have to let everybody know. We don't have to flow in the spirit and, and, and say all kind of un, uh, words that no can't nobody understand. understand. You can pray, amen, without anybody else knowing, but pray without ceasing. Amen. We all be ready, willing to pray at all times. Then the last thing it said, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Preacher, how can I give thanks and we're going through COVID right now? I'm glad you asked. Because God is going to bring you out. And just like he allowed the children of Israel to set up those stones, amen, as a monument as to what God had done for them, he's going to allow us to go through and to be able to tell others how good he is. Amen. Again, people in church, some people never give testimony. But after this time, everybody ought to be able to have a testimony. I got a testimony as to what God did for me. If you can't tell it in church, you ought to be able to tell your, your children, your grandchildren, your unborn, great, great grandchildren in the year 2020. This is what God did for me. Amen. I don't believe God brought us this far uh, to leave us. Amen. With that, I'm going to close with that song. Amen. Amen. It's been my spirit all week. Back for a couple of years. My wife. Oh, my. She 
tell me all the same this time. I said, we better let the Williams brothers sing this time. Many victories to let defeat have the last word. Again, we thank everyone for joining in. Let that play out. I tell you that I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word. Hear this when I wake up in the morning and I realize that, that I'm still here. That lets me know that God gave me favor. No matter what circumstances revealed, he brought me through my pain and sorrow, reassured me I got hope for tomorrow. Defeat can't compete with mercy and grace. Oh no, if I just keep faith, I can win this race. I think of his goodness and all he's done for me. Dare not complain, because he brought me over the rugged hill. And all of my heartaches and pain, well, I understand. Try has come to make me strong. Gotta stay in the race, yo. I gotta keep pressing on. This is my testimony to you. I got victory, even though I don't look like what I've been through. Ooh, I see victory. I just can't let defeat have the last word. Oh, I see victory. I can't let defeat have the last word. Listen, y'all, when I wake up in the morning, I get out of my bed, y'all. I, I put one foot before the other. I count it victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I count, it victory. count it victory. Yes, I do. I count it victory. Said I count it victory. Yes, I do. I count it victory. We truly are getting ready to go. Uh, but again, Wednesday night, uh, time 7 p.m., we have a uh, prayer service. Information, business type up, uh, update as to church where we are at Morgan Grove. Morgan Grove, make sure to pass your uh, the conference call line around in the access code. Uh, anybody that don't have it, feel free to give me a call at 901-497-7956. Or uh, on Facebook, you can reach me. But again, Wednesday night time, 7 p.m. Deacon Miller is going to do probably uh, five to seven minutes summation of our uh, Sunday school. We're going to start incorporating that in uh, uh, so we can uh, uh, get closer and closer unto the Lord. I thank God for this medium. I thank God for everything he's done for us. Amen. And we're going to continue to try, to try to do all that we can do uh, for the Lord. Amen. We got one more and I'm, I'm truly going to go. I keep saying one more, but this is my one of my favorite singers here. This is uh, it's not Lisa Knowles, but it's uh, Sister Pam, Amen. Jones, Amen. amen. I, I got the right, the right name, right? But it's not Sister Pam. Some checking your door. And again, the checking your door for the choir. Preach, why you got so much stuff in your door still? I was there for 25 years, amen. And we had a great pastor, and I was uh, preaching every Sunday. So I found ways of being part of the service, and this is how I did it, amen. What does that mean, preacher? It means find a way to be a part of the service. Everybody can't preach, everybody can't urge, everybody 
can't sing. But find a way to uplift Jesus, amen. And this was my way of uplifting Jesus. We got videos from way back. I was happy to see, be able to see a, a video of, of Minister Earlene McGowan on yesterday. Uh, well, it will be buried on yesterday. And I'm glad that she's online. She'll be there forever and ever and ever. And I hope that Tyrone will get a chance to see her. I pray that everything was well with you and that everything is going great. Remember the message today, and that is that God asked that the children of Israel would do something to commemorate them when they commemorate him when they passed over the Amen the Jordan River. Let's do something to commemorate what God has done for us. Not only just the COVID, but everything that we've done. He truly has brought us out. The last two things is uh, cash out Morgan, uh, Morgan Grove, dollar sign, Morgan Grove. And then the uh, last thing truly is today, please uh, go out to YouTube and uh, uh, subscribe to Dwight Card, amen. And we're trying to uh, get to a point where we can go live from YouTube off of the phone. Uh, you have to have a thousand subscribers, amen. That's, uh, that's quite a few. Well, I will say this, that over the last uh, three weeks, we probably gained almost 100 subscribers. <clears throat> so continue to uh, go out there. It's YouTube uh, videos of things that uh, mainly they say our church and songs and preaching that I've done in the past I very uh, I will upload this right after we get through with this and we will have it out there on YouTube also so we have about uh, six of the past sermons and we'll be putting more and more out there uh, may God bless and may God keep you amen